Jadi saat gempa di pusat kota, yang beliau telepon yang Cianjur Selatan. Di Cianjur Selatan kata beliau nggak ada apa-apa. Gitu. Nah ini ada gempa gitu kan. Ternyata deket. Nah yang sana siap, yang sini nggak siap. Yang selatan karena udah tahu sih Pak Bupati nanti kira-kira makanya Pak Bupati waktu itu sampaikan ke saya, saya udah istighosa Pak Jumadi semuanya gini dan semua orang karena pikiran di selatan sana. Ternyata yang terjadi di kota Cianjurnya. Nah. Itu yang saya bilang, andai kan kita semuanya planningnya sama, jadi kita harus berpikir kita e, berharap yang terbaik, tapi kita harus bersiap yang terburuk. Kita berharap semuanya lancar, tapi kita harus bersiap yang terburuk. Bagaimana worst case skenario yang akan terjadi, apa-apa terhadap kita. Nah sama, internet of thing untuk kalau banjir ini, oke okay, setelah tahu ada banjir, kependeksnya bagaimana? Saat banjirnya lah yang harus diselesaikan, bukan saat sebelum ada banjirnya. Nah jadi kalau udah seperti itu, Katakanlah kita uh, uh, apa namanya pakai video analitik seperti itu. Nanti kalau pada saat banjir, apa yang kita siapkan? Misalkan kita mesin pompa segala macam itu harus sudah siap untuk uh, running. Saya kira itu. Next, ya yeah, uh, terima kasih itu saja berkali uh, apa yang perlu saya sampaikan hanya sedikit sharing saja tentang uh, kira-kira uh, apa yang perlu kita uh, apa kita implementasikan dalam uh, smart city. Intinya adalah uh, sinergi dan kolaborasi. Sinergi and collaboration between the government, swasta, kemudian jadi uh, pentahelik itu harus benar-benar diimplementasikan di sana. Kuncinya di situ, how to implement pentahelik. Kalau implementation pentahelik berjalan, pasti sinergi and collaboration between all of us bisa menjadikan bangsa ini menjadi bangsa yang lebih baik. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, we kindly request for you to remain on the stage, sir, because there's question and answer session. <laughs> When the question and answer session for the first term, we provide the opportunity for participants on study. Yes, ma'am, please. Bismillah, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam. Pak Wakil Wali Kota. Mm-hmm. Saya Nuriza Kartika dari Kota Tebing Tinggi. Mm-hmm. Saya perkenalkan kota saya, Pak, hampir sama sepertinya dengan Kota <laughs> Tegal. Uh, kita itu luasnya kira-kira 38 km Bujur Sanggar, hampir sama, mm-hmm. 40 mm-hmm. penduduk kita sekitar 200 ribu kelurahan kita 35 kecamatan kita 5 nah, Alhamdulillah juga kita sudah menggelar FO di seluruh wilayah sebagiannya itu adalah partisipasi dari pihak kerjasama dengan pihak swasta sebagiannya milik Pemko sebagiannya milik swasta kemudian kita juga sudah tidak ada blank spot pelayanan FO kita sudah mencakup uh, sampai ke puskesmas dan puskesmas pembantu seluruh kelurahan kita banyak sekali area area free wifi saya itu tertarik tadi pak dengan uh, strategi negara ya pak Uh, pertama mungkin Bapak bisa membantu memberikan uh, menularkan lah pengetahuan gitu Pak apakah di situ ada kos ya yang harus ditanggung oleh pemerintah dengan bekerja sama dengan Grab kemudian apakah ada uh, impact apa masukan ke PAD kita dari itu karena di Tebing tinggi itu kita sedang mengembangkan satu kebijakan nama namanya mu trans mudah transaksi dan masa mu trans itu tidak pakai grab kak pak di tebing tinggi itu banyak Jadi uh, sistemnya seperti Grab itu antar jemput, tetapi menggunakan becak bermotor 
Nah, ada di situ kami masih membahas kan pasti ada biaya tuh Pak, ada bisnis di situ. Kami berharap dari kegiatan itu pemerintah kota mendapatkan PAD gitu Pak. Mungkin Bapak Bidang bisa memberi masukan apa gimana ya? Kita pemerintah kan dilarang berbisnis gitu ya. Pak. Uh, jadi satu terpikir pada kami itu untuk membentuk UPT untuk layanan digital memanfaatkan gelaran FO yang ada supaya membantu juga mendapatkan PAD untuk pemerintah kota. <tuh> Saya sepakat dengan Bapak bahwa Smart City tidak melulu tentang teknologi. Teknologi itu hanya sebagian dari Smart City. Penting bagi kita adalah juga membangun budaya, membangun culture masyarakat kita. Bagaimana mereka mau berpartisipasi dengan kondisi, keadaan, dan masalah dari setiap kota yang pasti unik. Saya pikir demikian, mohon Bapak berkenan memberi yeah. saran atau berbagi pengalaman. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Tapi begitu tinggi? Tebing tinggi, tinggi, Pak. North Sumatera. Uh, uh, Oke. Okay. Ibu siapa? Bu Nur ya. Baik, uh, terima kasih. Uh, memang betul apa namanya. Kalau yang kayak tadi itu adalah fungsi kita yang ketiga tadi. Services to public. How to serve apa misalkan perizinan. Itu kita menservis mereka. Korea. Korea itu kan penyanyi-nyanyi muncul kan karena apa? Hampir semuanya itu gelaran F-nya sampai ke rumah. Sampai ke rumah masing-masing kan. Kita mengeluarkan budaya. Betul. Sama Grab. Kalau mungkin orang lain Grab. Karena ribu saya, saya tanya ke Grab, Grab kamu juga kemudian mungkin biayanya kalau naik motor atau naik ojek dua kali bolak balik kan dua kali bolak balik kalau enam ribu dua kali dua belas ribu kan kosnya tinggi. Kalau kita hanya sekali dia pergi ke sana cuma tiga ribu. Tapi kita yang tanggung. Tapi bagaimana uang yang tadi itu mungkin bisa lebih bermanfaat untuk masyarakat. Jadi ke sana jangan berpikirnya. Jadi jangan berpikir nggak boleh bisnis kita betul. Tapi andaikan mereka misalnya tak perizinan nggak usah datang ke kantor, masukin semua pakai itu nanti selesai kasih deliver izinnya ke, ke mereka. Setelah mereka izin bisnisnya berjalan pasti masuk PAD ke kita. Baru nanti impactnya pasti ekonomi itu tahun dua ribu dua dua kalau tidak salah tahun dua ribu dua dua puluh dua ribu dua puluh satu segala macam negara begitu ya. Nah kita itu saat pandemi setelah mulai reda itu ribuannya ekonomi seratus dua puluh persen sampai oleh Pak Ketua OJK tentang bank, saya tanya orang leasing segala macam sudah baik lagi baju cuma di hampir seratus dua puluh transaksi dalam dalam waktu itu ya. Padahal waktu itu kita mungkin ada, hampir ada sekitar lima triliun orang yang punya hutang yang kebingungan gitu kan. Tapi seperti itu. Nah, hal seperti itu uh, saya kira memang mungkin tidak 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 uh, tidak langsung kita rasakan pemerintah memberikan uh, fasilitas tapi mereka misalkan kira-kira bagaimana memang bu tugas kita adalah melayani mereka itu dulu pahami dulu tugas pemerintah melayani masyarakat dari lahir sampai meninggal itu dulu melayani masyarakat dari lahir sampai meninggal tidak ada satu masyarakat pun yang tidak dilayani oh, yang miskin yang kaya kalian pandemi ini jadi uh, sedikit ada uh, ribuan kemarin 
Jadi kalau katakanlah uh, dengan seperti itu kita mempersiapkan penulis yang bagus, tidak bisa bahasa ini bisa kuat di dalam menghadapi pandemi lebih baik ekonominya mati daripada warganya mati gitu kan ya. Sekarang kan cuma kira begitu. Jadi nggak usah khawatir. Kalau dulu saat pandemi kita bilang lebih baik ekonominya mati daripada kitanya mati. Nanti ke depan katakanlah ada ada krisis ekonomi, ya kita kuat dong kita udah hidup pasti lebih lebih itu lagi. Dan uh, Uh, mungkin uh, di apa di tempatnya ibu silakan uh, bisa sharing diskusi dengan siapa saja gitu kan terutama kalau mau saya kira sih kalau aplikasi kita boleh kasih nggak ada masalah ya ya kita bisa kasih kasih free bisa kasih kontak personnya di dukcapil untuk mengkopi memang harus begitu jadi jangan sedikit dikit bisnis sedikit dikit pemerintah itu kan rata-rata misalkan mau bikin aplikasi bayar bayar coba dulu diskusi begitu jadi maju bersama itu kan nah konsep budaya yang sama kemudian gotong royong bersama baru bisa maju jangan jangan sendiri sendiri kita tahu di di di, di, di. Insya Allah kalau kita sama eh, bagaimana eh, itikat baik kita untuk majukan masa ini nggak ada sesuatu yang susah kalau kita bisa bersama-sama sinergi dan kolaborasi kuncinya cuma itu aja. Terima kasih. Oke, okay, thank you so much Bapak. I synergize and collaboration, Pak. Oke, okay, and then uh, is there any other question from the online participants? Okay, then let's move on to online participants from Mr. Rijal Surya. Uh, good afternoon, Bapak. in Tegal does misunderstanding and misleading of the people will give huge impact kind of hinder or make an obstacles or instead the building of the ecosystem itself will make the people able to adapt by themselves jadi if I may uh, make it into bahasa selamat siang Bapak dalam penyusunan penerapan smart city DRH tersebut Apakah ketika dalam hal ini mungkin lebih ke hambatan ataukah pembangunan ekosistemnya yang nanti akan membuat masyarakat menyesuaikan diri dengan sendirinya dengan sistem atau konsep smart city tersebut? Please. Baik, uh, terima kasih. Begini, uh, tadi kan saya sampaikan itu kan ya. Memang membangun uh, smart city atau smart sebenarnya kita sebenarnya punya proyek dengan Pak Prof Suwono bagaimana ada living Jaga terhambat. Jadi harapannya waktu itu adalah di area Taman Pancasila itu yang kita rubah menjadi lebih bagus. Di situ semuanya akan terkontrol menggunakan IT. Kemudian bagaimana memahami masyarakat tentang misalkan contoh apa namanya parkir sembarangan. Tetapi di situ akan kita, kita punya perda kita edukasi atau apa namanya mengajak mereka untuk sense of belonging terhadap masing-masing kota rakyat itu sebenarnya gampang pemerintah itu yang penting adalah mau mendengar apa yang bersama masyarakat apa namanya berikan tetapi paling tidak berapa presentasinya yang kira-kira masyarakat itu mau gitu mendengar apa yang mereka keluhkan kemudian yang ini punya problem ini paling lebih penting lagi dalam mereka seperti tugas kita dalam melayani jadi kalau katakanlah kita paksa untuk implementasi smart city pasti mungkin tidak akan berhasil saya mengimplementasikan jago sistem ini kita mengajak mereka kebetulan saya eh, desa tadi saya tentang eh, apa namanya implementasi IT tegal jadi saya benar-benar turun melihat oh ini loh begini jadi Banyak sekali ke dalam masyarakat yang mungkin tadinya nggak paham. Coba bayangkan sama tadi yang saya sampaikan. Kalau mereka datang ke kantor Dukcapil, membayar 12.000 ribu balik naik Gojek atau naik pakai motor, tetapi kita pahamkan 
you tinggal upload uh, download aplikasinya install sedikit kita kasih tahu bagaimana bagaimana kemudian nggak ada kos paling mungkin kuota gitu kan kuota kan sudah dimakan untuk yang lainnya ada wifi gratis segala macam kira-kira begitu mungkin mas terima kasih oke okay, thank you so much bapak and we still have one more question from the online participants from Mr Muhammad Anis coming from ITB what is the obstacles in implementing smart city in Tegal <laughs> especially what are solutions that uh, the Tegal governments have uh, tried to overcome those obstacles ya yeah. yang paling yang pertama kali adalah mungkin change management bagaimana memerlukan itu change bagaimana memahamkan pada masyarakat untuk merubah pola pikir memanfaatkan IT the change management saya ingat betul dulu tahun 95 gitu kan eh sorry 90-an 91 kemudian ada mouse implementasi di, di kantor ini pakai mouse gimana Pak Jumadi yang begini mouse gitu-gitu ya ngejalan gitu kan bayangkan aja ya kan sekarang juga sama mirip-mirip tetapi beda beda kasusnya ah susah usah amat saya langsung datang gitu kan nah obstacle obstacle seperti itu banyak sekali dan kita harus memahami bahwasanya masing-masing culture nya berbeda tegal berbeda dengan yang lainnya tegal masyarakatnya mungkin apa namanya masyarakat pantura tahu sendiri ya uh, uh, mungkin keras sedikit keras segala macam kita harus sedikit mengelus lagi kira begitu dan dan obstacle obstacle seperti itu yang yang di, malah bukan IT yang jadi culture kira jadi IT nya malah nggak bikin orang Uh, contohnya begini, kita masih ingat hati-hati pakai IT itu kan bisa nanti negatifnya aja. Apa tahu? Saya kebetulan ketua e-sport kota Tegal ya. Ketua isinya adalah untuk main game. Setelah kemarin kejuaraan pulang bawa uang 25 juta, tidak ada menang lagi, menang lagi. Mereka malah nanya, ini gimana caranya? Akhirnya saya bikin apa namanya e-sports semuanya ditaruh di situ kita belajar bareng main game semuanya saya main lokal pala mobile legend pubg jadi karena apa namanya uh, atlet kemarin kita juara ada satu uh, orang tegal kemarin juara di Jepang kemudian juara di Inggris yang tadi kepikiran hal seperti itu yang kita harus beri pemahaman kepada masyarakat obstacle obstacle seperti itu main game cuma dibuang-buang waktu gitu kan ya kita atur waktunya nggak boleh waktu belajar belajar atau main game makanya diarahkan sebenarnya tugas kita yang mengarahkan mereka untuk bagaimana yang negatifnya saja kebetulan kita selama ini di, di pemerintah bagaimana yang positif itu kita tunjukkan kepada masyarakat ini loh main game juga bisa menjadi atlet bisa menghasilkan bahkan kemarin uh, kepala sekolah saya sebut saja, saja namanya SMK Mutu SMK Muhammadiyah satu gitu kan setelah juara tingkat provinsi Jawa Tengah pulang bawa uang 25 tadinya nggak ada yang arahkan setelah saya arahkan berkumpul jadi satu tim dikumpulkan begini ikut ke Jurda di Solo menang juara dua tiga empat eh juara dua tiga Tegal juara satu dua Tegal di antara 35 kota kabupaten di Jawa Tengah. Awalnya mereka terpisah-pisah. Setelah saya kumpulkan, saya bikin untuk tim. Karena kita tahu mana sama kayak main bola, mana penyerang, mana penjaga gawang, mana pemain tengah kan seperti itu. Sama main game juga seperti itu. Mana yang suka menyerang, yang bertahan. Nah, akhirnya tim itu seperti itu. Sekarang luar biasa bagusnya. Hampir semua event kita ikut. Akan sampai uh, seperti itu kan. Tapi saya bilang. Kan. Jadi pasti obstacle-nya ada berat. Makanya saya minta kepada para pemimpin leader terutama pahami dulu tentang IT. Jangan begini-begini, gak ngerti apa-apa ngomong. Kenapa juga nanti? Jadi minimal kita tanya pemimpinnya, kepala dinas mungkin juga harus sedikit paham ada benar. Merahnya kira-kira bisa, oh ternyata seperti ini. Oh, jangankan kepada masyarakat, kepada pemimpin juga ada yang bingung, pemimpin yang tahu bagaimana ini IT. Nah makanya 
uh, harus dikasih pemahaman tentang bagaimana pemanfaatan hati bukan bisnis as usual bukan itu bukan yang penting menggugurkan kewajiban bukan itu pemerintahan pemerintahan jangan sampai hanya menggugurkan kewajiban jadi harus paham betul bagaimana di once again let's give for applause ladies and gentlemen Uh, we kindly request Bapak to stay and remain on the stage because there's any souvenir session. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, next on, we're going to have handing souvenirs from ICESCO in this occasion, represented by Mr. Dr. Fuad L. Aini to Mr. Muhammad Jumadi STMT as Vice Mayor of Tegal City. Okay, thank you so much to Mr. Muhammad Juadi and also Mr. Dr. Fuad Elaini. Ladies and gentlemen, we carry on to our last and our fourth session which in topic of Smart City Solution Development Study Case brought by Manuel, Mr. Manuel Rocamora as Board Advisor of Urban Regenerative and X0 Smart Cities. Mr. Manuel Rocamora has joined us online through Zoom meetings for Mr. Manuel Rocamora. The screen and time is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon there. I don't know if you yes, can listen to me well. Way. Just let me. Okay, then I will share my screen. And I will start my presentation and introducing myself. This will read it. Can you share the presentation? Can you see? Yes, sir. It's visible. Okay. So, good morning, everybody. As I say, thank you very much for the invitation to ISESCO, to the Smart City Community Innovation Center, and the city of Bandin, for this invitation. My name is Manuel Rocamora. I am a global advisor in the smart sustainability, smart cities around the world. I have a vast experience uh, moving in 12 different countries and continents between Latin America, Europe, Asia, and Middle East. It's um, hours. I have been moving between the connectivity sector, so regarding the 5G, 4G, fiber, until in 2007-8, moving in, uh, in Finland, North Europe, to the smart first smart city prototype that uh, we do the, in um, Expo, close to the headquarters of Nokia. And... Um, From that time, 2008, I have been expertise myself in the, preparing the, the changes of how we can approach the different changes in uh, smart city models around the world. So I will share with you all my experience or the experience of the view from the last take and from Asia, mostly China, Asia, Pacific, uh, Middle East. And sometimes uh, even some comments about Europe and some trends. And I will give you also my overview. In, in addition of the being an, uh, an advisor of the holding of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, where I am connected in this moment for Riyadh, I am also part of the advisor of their fund, uh, Climate Fund that is Carbonless from Singapore, Hong Kong. So we are trying to decarbonize Asia. So thank you very much. I think this is a, a good introduction of myself. The topic of today is uh, to talk about the build re regenerative and uh, sustainable smart cities and adaptive smart cities. So I will go through the evolution of the model of the smart city, what we understand, because the, 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 the terms of the smart city is very vast. Some people can think uh, uh, some definitions, some other others. So they, so I will take my personal view about all these uh, 15 years almost working around the world in, in This was some different models, models, and I will give you the picture of what we are moving with the say regenerative adaptive with in the model. So maybe if you don't listen well or you have any question, no problem. Or before even I have the, the question, 
transfer at the end of the session. But if you have any any comments, feel free to contact to tell me, and I will stop. No problem. So, just a, a little bit introduction of what this is exactly. What has been some trends around around the world the last years about the for smart city and urban development. So, let's consider that by 2050. 68% or 17% of the population of humanity will be 2018, 19, 20. We are talking about 58, 60% means probably 10% more in 2050. So that means 70% of this emission of the city house, emission greenhouse, is coming from the cities, from CO2 emissions. So we need to do an approach how to do it for the future new generation, how it take it. It's not enough that how we use technology or tech for improve the smart city models on how we can do to create more uh, environmental friendly or centric, climate centric for the, the future. So in this regard, there are some organizations around the world trying to help the, cover so many cities, like for example, the program Net Zero Carbon City organized for the World Economic Forums, who we have uh, the platform for shaping the future of the energy, materials, and infrastructure for the urban transformation. That's covered an association of, I think it's around 50, 50 major cities around the world, to that just cover how to do the new strategies in the different ways, because you, we must consider some, some different scenarios, because we, we take, for example, cities about Europe, like we are talking about, the, let's say, Brownfield, or cities who are more... Uh, already developed and you have another challenge to me attached, like for example, a traffic management, air, air pollution that they will need to do, how they will evolve it. Other areas like the one you have in the Asia Pacific, ASEAN, there are more fast development and increasing population, but there are different scenarios and changes for the future. Paris or Copenhagen, they have this movement the fight 15 minute cities. What's mean these 15 minute cities? 15 minute cities is how they are planning the city to be approached to the downtown of the city or the head of the city or the economy tradition they have to avoid any traffic or, or try to have the, the city much more close to just to do in the downtown city. For example, you have to use the metro. They just do electrical vehicles, and not, you cannot use any, any other any other how to say emission vehicles. Just to do more friendly bicycles, the road, the city. So this is the moment with a fifteen fifteen uh, minute city. What's happening with this fifteen minute city with this or the uh, the, the mobile uh, the, the mobile uh, as a service uh, modular application? So what happened? So there are areas in downtown like the parkings, uh, like ports, like other cities. So you need to rethink how you will reuse this adaptive, reuse these areas. For example, I can tell you the city of Melbourne. So do the, the fleet management, for example, to use Uber or to use some mobility solution. What's happened? Some areas in the downtown of the parking are actually in disuse or not using. So that we need to rethink about how are planning now to reuse in the future, for example. In Melbourne, city of Melbourne, they are used to do green zone, to do parking, to do the emission of the pollution. Cities, for example, like um, industrial downtowns like uh, Detroit. Detroit has an example of so the all factories passed to do a recovery asset. What the use of this recovery asset? Because the phenomenon of COVID uh, and another thing that happened the last year, this will be recovered, for example, in vertical farms to have the production of the fruits and verdure uh, are equal to more close to the market. Because now the trend is the supply chain and how we can we can accelerate this thing and to have more close to the market and the more circular economy and more uh, friendly production. So another thing that they are uh, there are reflection is to do is uh, if you consider the cities smart cities like also the, in, in terms of geopolitics how before the old Greece and Rome and now for example of the countries if. The future is around the countries, is around the cities, or around clusters. What I'm saying is a, a cluster, why? Because if you say, for example, China, China has built uh, six clusters, 
around uh, an area of the industrial, like for example, the Great Bay Area. It's an area who covered 11 cities in Yukon, Hong Kong, Macau, Shenzhen, Dongguan, Guangzhou. The, all in all, there are 11 cities and 70% is, is one of the top 10 of the GDP. You see their economy, how the population, 70 million people population with a very fast evolution. And at the same time, their economy is much more higher. So that means the thing they need to handle, like waste management, uh, um, traffic management, uh, uh, the people are very, very expansion, like Hong Kong, there is, you don't have place to, to find. So there is a, a lot of challenge to handle, much more sometimes than, 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 than more than a country. You see, for example, in other in China, like for example, they take another cluster, like this is Hubei, Beijing, or the port of, of Tianjin. So this is a cluster connected with this high speed train to, to try to evolve it to do it in the port. And that's discovered another phenomenon. So who is there? Which technology we use to this smart cities project? Technologies have been evolved. We need to use like an error of the tools. And we talk about the, the evolution between the smart plus e to dark. What I, I mean for the smart smart is the movement for the social mobility, analytics, cloud plus edge. We use it for the to do all the tools of development. The college before has explained about the connectivity, how to do it, how to do the CCTV cameras, and to dark. Dark is the, 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 the new technology you do the project, how you do to accelerate all. What is dark is, is to with ledgers or blockchain, artificial intelligence. We have in all the machine learning, all, the, all we are doing about the traffic and the city. We got the, the mixed reality, who take uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, and you take digital twins to analyze. And, and do simulation about how we want to expand the city, how is the phenomenon about the pollution, how is the traffic management, evacuation. So this is a tool. The horizon, the the machine learning or artificial intelligence to take the, 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 the process help with the new will see the city in the future. So based on that, on agenda today, I try to do um, as much as concrete as possible. I just want to touch for you some element because you are we are in the, talking about Indonesia. So how the evolution about the ASEAN and Middle East overview about some smart cities. Uh, during the, this, the last 15 years, the first generation and evolution of the smart cities. Examples of the sustainable cities and practical solutions. So, so Dubai or big studio from Copenhagen, or even a studio from Singapore in November 2008, the creation of the smart, Asian smart city networks was 26 cities around the, around this area. How is the challenge they are also you have a young population, but before 2030, so eight years from now, at that time we saw 12 years, they expected to grow in these 20 cities around 100 million people more. So if you are receiving in the same urbanization center a hundred million people more coming to the city, the energy distribution, power, whenever you are taking this waste management, they are not prepared really what will this happen and what is the evolution and you, you need to that. So you need to prepare from that time and now how you want to do in terms of security, traffic management, Climate, so you have typhoons every year. For example, in the area of Philippines, Hong Kong, you have uh, sometimes they have uh, earthquakes. You have uh, so, so, some phenomenon and geo areas that they need to be treated. So inside this 
area, they create a plan. Now, last month of Network. Now, including from Indonesia, there are three cities that include Jakarta, Majuangi, and Makassar. Uh, but repeat, there is also much more about these 26, not only as a smart city, because this covers other things. Like you can add it there, for example, the new capitals. You, you say new capitals of Indonesia, but you have the new capital also of, of Philippines. So you see, um, moving Manila outside of the nuclear city because of the role of traffic and management. And then you have also, for example, in Egypt, you have the new So this is, this is so important you need to evolve. Cities and you have a, a very, very good, for example, professor based on the how is the rise of the Vietnam or China. So the rise model about the floating cities, about the phenomenon that you have the floating every year, basically about typhoons and in the area of the or the Hong Kong and, and, and Shenzhen, Macau, that area, they put a regeneration of the mangrove barrier coastal to avoid some kind of the, the growing of the level of the sea and the problem of, you can uh, you find every year about the floating in this area. So this is a phenomenon that you just record the mangrove, but also the barrier protection In the border between Hong Kong and, and Shenzhen, the mega project now is deploying in another model. We can talk about if you have any question about this, but this is not the, the, the topic here. There is another project that is one personally involved in Beijing, who is the Green Horizon, and it's a good example of the regenerative city or adaptive city. Why? The Green Horizon project in Beijing, I personally started there was in 2014. During that time, IBM was a Watson IBM a platform to have cognitive data. And they, were, they bought, I don't know if you remember, the weather company. The weather company, because around the city of Beijing was full of sensors about many embassies and many times to detect it, how the air quality and pollution, uh, how this air detected and coming to the city of Beijing and how we can do and because for example it's a phenomenon coming a, a, an iron and a wind from the desert of Mongolia entering the city and how it's cleaning and it, uh, some things that you can do regarding the monitoring how the data of the air pollution so what has happened with the Green Horizon project is not only covering the big data and air pollution but though this is a phenomenon of the transition between the bus and taxi to electric vehicle taxi with the company Beyond Dreams from the China, which basically all the transition with electric vehicle charging. The second airport of the city of Beijing, this is one inaugurated two, three years ago from Zabadi in the southeast of the city. Then all the downtown city of the Politburo and the administration of the city, all this part is the downtown of the city. So this has a for the downtown of the city. And this is the transition of the new factories around the city of Beijing, who has been switched off and taken out and moving to the part of the one row, one bell corridor. So all in all, we are talking about 10 to 15 year deployment program for the city of Beijing to have an evolution and to have, you know, a problem of the air pollution you have every winter, mostly for the heating system, central city, as I told before, and the traffic management and, and growth of the city, to do a clean city before 2040. That is the goal of the Green Horizon project. Another project you have, like a reference is in Tokyo, you have the woman city, the, the follow the Mount Fuji. This is covered by Toyota spin-off, it's a woman city, where it's also it's a, a living lab of mobility, who do the... Bye.
Recording in progress. Another example, you have a uh, chunking AIC for this sort of information, how we grow, how we decide more eco friendly to have more internet connection. You have the sample of India, you have been a, a private public partnership, you have a, a hundred projects like Amaravati or other to do in smart cities to do the plus deployment. You have, as I mentioned before, the three new capitals, you have like phenomenon now in the Philippines, Indonesia, and Egypt. Then you have also, I will come in now a special case because I am here in the in the Saudi Arabia for the Saudi 2030 plan or vision Saudi 2030 for the full transformation and the dependency of oil and gas economy to pass to the to the tourists, to the new distribution of the economy in other other elements. So I before this is the gas and smart cities, but repeat there are other that not include you know better than me. Many of these islands connected, they are not good grid. There are also some of them that's for example, you have in Indonesia, you have some basic uh, raw material to work from the a challenge now to do in the storage system in the, the renewable process that I think is a, is a good opportunity for you in the future. And that's that's what I want to tell and I told you before about the evolution of what I understand the evolution of the smart city. So smart city in 2008, so it was November, December 2007, IBM take the concept of the smart planet. So the smart planet, how to do it, how to implement it. And from that time, it was the model 1.0, who is technology driving for technologies like uh, Bosco or from Samsung. This can be the same technology driving, for example, you find in the city of Sondo in Korea. Or you have uh, the model 2.0, it's like technology enabled city led by the, the, the municipality, like from Barcelona, example. Then in 3.0, it's a model model for the 2012, 13, 14, see like that in this scenario, where Vienna was the promoter about the circular city or co-creation and involved with the city centric and they have the this is the citizen co-creation model 3.0 then the 4.0 is the one i told the sample of the green horizon project in beijing and now in the in the middle east you have ne like neon city from the saudi arabia like a model for uh four zero cognitive city to take the data about all the you saw the artificial intelligence and sensoring data to take from how you do more preventive analytics and more reactive on CCTV cameras, etc. And then the one that we are the topic we are talking today is the 5.0, where they are working no more in the adaptive, regenerative, and X0 city. So, example like Anama Riyadh, or example like the, in Cairo, you have sustainable Cairo by the studio URB, or other examples like uh, Oceanics in Busan by Vic. And then you have, for example, in the advanced air mobility, modular model for the e ball and more clinic, like for example, for the Elite, who is a company for the uh, sustainable mobility infrastructure. To have, you can put very modular, for example, in the coastal harbor, and no need to be influences in the other part of the city. So, on that regard, I want to show you the sample of the how it's designed. For example, this is a example like a llama in Riyadh. So this is starting the project now. This is covering an area, an area, so I will give you the details now, but this is a very big area to cover in different, you know, you consider about the green hair, the orientation, the blue and green area is totally sustainable. This is a 10 kilometer square area where you have 44,000 residents, spare this resident urban it we, since 100% renewable energy, 100% water energy, circular economy, you have a cycling, you have zero waste city, and this is design about rings, how you do it the more eco-friendly design to do recovery and to be eco-sustainable eco for the cell. So this is, this is studio has regenerated some project around the world, not only in Riyadh, because as I say, have one in Cairo, one in South Africa, there are two projects more in Dubai, and they are expanding thing. Similar project like this, you can, I think Studio Pomero has a couple of them in Malaysia, and if I don't wrong now, you will have one more in Indonesia. But I want to show you this example like regenerative, and uh, in the future, this is, for example, the other one I, I mentioned before, Oceanics, this is in Korea, 
in Busan. So what it is, this is a modular, modular, it's a resident sustainable community, an ecology. So this is a platform living to have the respect of also the, all the marine protection downtown. This is bio rock. This is, this is study of preparing on zero waste system. It's, it's a model that can be modular and expanded for the harbor and for all the part of the, of the, of the ports that can be protected. And it's also analyzed to be floating system to be, I mean, it's very eco-friendly and just generate as much as you are growing in the future. So this example, for example, is done by a big studio, like the same I told before about Chonkino VI City and Robotic, but this is a friendly port. And this is the sample I told you before about the advanced mobility for the modular infrastructure by Elite. Elite is a company from Norway, Norway. It's now in London to try to design. They are expected to have more than 2,000 of these modular infrastructure in the port and harbor before 2040. So this is that take it about uh, um, uh, advanced air mobility, who is uh, electrical, uh, let's say vertical and trade of landing. So we should get a helicopter before, but now they will be fully renewable and autonomous at this critical infrastructure. But at the same time, you can put this in modular hexagons in the coast. That means that you will have autonomous uh, shipping and autonomous team that will be more eco-friendly and you can spend as much as you need it in the area try to avoid other kind of uh, more uh, aggressive uh, traffic uh, design. So with this example, I will focus now in what I want to like Saudi Arabia, take like the dependency of oil and gas. And how they are planning to do in the future to have to you know in the technologies in the smart and infrastructure for the, the world in, in different markets. So this is a city who has done as you have the data here. So you dependency basically with the gas we are talking about sixty five percent of the territory, but to do the forty has developed so they are massive an active Saudi Logic 3 plan that I will show you now to take in many, many scenarios. They are, I must say, they are running more than a bit to the some, some image and some data, but also running in parallel that uh, that will be affected with the EC at the NC, the capital. They are expected to have a react like one of the top 10 capital before 2040, plus to 7.5 million population to 15 to 20 million population. That's uh, required a massive expansion plan to generate how to say in an area we have a, how to say not a very friendly <laughs> uh, climate and you need to prepare as many things that uh, have to be as much as sustainable. So the Southern 2030 plan is covered many things. I, I think I, I saw the speaker before me. I have about the program. So there is the. Ambitious nation, this is driven economy, this is private society, but there is a more important, there are 11 programs like uh, national integrated logistics and development Cities, not the brown from city, new cities, they all of them they have built in, 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 around a cure, cognitive, hyper aware, ultra safe, they say hyper connected. They are planning to have a full infrastructure to prepare it, to do this thing. This is a common element of all of this. I will give you some, some example of this project that maybe you, you saw in the media, more famous. So, Neon, the famous Neon city is, is the, let's say, geographically is located in the western coast, not western coast of the sea, of the country of uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So, it's in the cross from the to Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, in this area, close to the Canal of Suez. And they had uh, the, the public investment fund, who is basically a sovereign fund of the, the Saudi Arabia, has invested a $500 billion to deploy this area like a uh, technology hub. It's like a nation expansion, like it's. Is around 26,000 and a half kilometers square. 
You have a, a plow in the city there are covering 16 sectors of the economy, the old neon, because the neon is also covered 450 kilometers of coastal area. And what I'm saying is uh, you must consider there are regions in the neon, like uh, Oxagon, the one you see the line, who is 170 kilometers to probably in the line, you can see the publicity, all designed with the mirroring, just to be more sustainable. Then you have Trojana in the mountains, like region, then you have the coastal, who will be deployed 15 Iceland. Then the first one was, I think, two weeks ago, launched the project this uh, Sendana. And then it will be a spin off created around the, the technology CD lab, who is a cognitive uh, city, for example, it's autonomous. Autonomous is covered all the infrastructure and technology for all these regions, and not only for NEO, but also they are planning to span also other services for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and expand it for the Middle East. Inova. Inova is the company that created a spin off full renewable of energy, water, and hydrogen. There you see NEO, green hydrogen company, food hub. Green hydrogen, like solution to help the goal to have all full uh, simple, 100% producing green in this area. In addition, as I say, it's, it's a mega project. It's a mega project will take some time. They expect to have 7 million, 7 million people to 2007, between 2030 and 40. So, this is a project very ambitious. Around here, you find a couple of projects more that's more oriented in. in Deployment of tourists and deployment of the eco tourists with the protection of the, the coral and cities. So the name is the Red Sea, or now it's named the, name the Red Sea Global. It's coming to a project in the Red Sea Development Company. I will give you an example the Red Sea Development Company. The Red Sea is uh, this is covered 22 Iceland, six inland areas. This covered also 48 hotels, 80,000 cameras. They expected to have this uh, running with the two first coming this year because the COVID has delayed some part of the project. I had full greenfield to the project this team. And they are, the goal is to protect all, all the all the, uh, the coastal area of the of this sea to have a new coral reforestation city that to have new production. The COP27 in Shani Sheikh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, the Prince of Saudi have the Saudi and Middle East Green Initiative. So, the 2.5 billion initiative to cover this area to have um, a clean deployment of the mid zero technologies or distributed energy resource like wind, energy, green hydrogen, and other one. So, for that regard, the, the company, the Red Sea has created a company, Red Sea Global, now to expand it to do service not only for this area, but also in the coast of energy, but another inside this program. A sample, these are here. These are other examples, but these are from protected areas of UNESCO. That means historical areas, like for example, Lula, 7,000 historical um, uh, uh, generation, and then here is an our DGD project, who is the original of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. These are the problem mega project at the same time as this, to deploy the historical uh, respect. So that means it's different from concept that the other one we, we saw before, or Riyadh Culture District. This is the Riyadh Culture District, is a project of the Royal Commission of Riyadh City, who is covered. The Sport Boulevard, you see here, the digital district, the, the cultural district, they cover also the King Salman Palace, cover also the Kiriya. This is the exit of the city of, of Riyadh, 45 kilometers. You have multi part thematic. You have uh, Formula One, you have the Red Six Flag, etc. So this will be all very transformative plan. I will try to jump very fast because otherwise, we, I think I don't want to take all the time talking about project. I more. I would like to have more questions that you have uh, curiosity. So, the industrial development logistics program. So, in this initiative, you say, as I said before, they have 14, uh, 14 uh, sorry, 11 small clean ports. They have been approved 8,000 kilometers of new railways. They have the to do the Middle East route. And then it's the most important is that. This is the last model, so was announced 
announced the new Riyadh Kinsan Master Com International Airport will be a metropolis. Developing the, in the new city of Riyadh and the expansion with the goal of this uh, mega city with a uh, plan to be one of the top 10 in 2040, creating an eight economic zone around the kingdom. So, we will be a special economic zone to be a liberalized economy. And to that, this can or model with the industrial city where all together to deploy. Five center of five building for center of four industrial revolution. That means including robotics, 3D printing, robotics automation, digital twin, all technologies to evolve this to help the kingdom to what they need to do that. So based on that, um, the roadmap of the essay of Real City, who is the more at the end of the this part of the solid geothermic, you have this, they have to spend to have the they have to do the Asian Olympic Olympic as well in the 2034. But it's most important, they have this aerotropolis about the city of Riyadh, and they are planning to grow between, as I say, to 7.5 to 50 to 20 million. So we need to think from now how they are planning to spend. And similar, like I say, in Melbourne, uh, samples or Detroit, like if you are expanding and you are planning to do the, in the blueprint and now how the city of organization grow, you need to think as well, and this is a reflection to all of us, you need to think as well, areas that you, for example, are planning to do downtown parking and do the fleet management, you will not reuse this. How will this be reused for 10 years from now? How is it the green parts with the vertical farms to grow in you know, the city? But that's not tomorrow, but this you need to think today. So this is the concept of regenerative adaptive city. And at the same time, I will leave to you this, the, the, the comment of the Prince Mohammed bin Salman, they say, there is no doubt the economy is not based in the country, rather it's in the cities. 80% uh, of the world economy is countries moving in the city, and that will be, but they will grow to the 95%. This is where going in the future institute and innovative um, session they did last time. But I will add this, this is a reflection as before. I don't think it's only cities, but it's more in cluster. And just take the example, and you have in Indonesia there, and uh, and that's for example you could you cover area like Indonesia, Philippines, all the country you have seven thousand Iceland. You need to connect the infrastructure. You need to create this. You need to create a wrong cluster on the trading. So based on that, I think the future in all of us. So how as well as when you are planning to expand this thing, is you need to think about this. Thank you very much for all. This is my. Uh, presentation introduction of the topic uh, today. Uh, I would like to do more details, but I think it's uh, sorry I have been very fast to this, but uh, I think the time is limited and I have been the last, I don't want to be there. So, if you have any question, more than welcome to respond. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Manuel Rocamora, ladies and gentlemen. Please let us give warm applause and appreciation for Mr. Manuel Rocamora. We have had already three questions up until now, Mr. Manuel. Um, the first one is from Miss Dina, coming from PT Delta about ASEAN Smart City Network of three cities from Indonesia. Why Banyuwangi and Mar is there a special character for a city to be a smart city network? Please. There is no, I mean, there is no why they, they choose this. Uh, I think it was 2018 why these three cities was uh, chosen by us as a smart city network. In the in November event in, in Singapore, but also in 2018, I think the framework about the choice of these two, uh, three, cities, three cities from the Indonesia we decided with the government and the entities between there and Indonesia, capital of Indonesia, or why, for example, what they what do was not in there, that was not, I think, not a special thing, that just an element that any of these three, for example, mobility, recovery of Cities, so there is original. I think when the discussion was not limitation 
of history, but preparing to respond to this coming in the COVID. <laughs> and that will probably change all. And now is the first report. Let's know about this expectation. I'm not anymore in Hong Kong. I was before based there and Macau. Is that will be growth from the city and will be the elements of all this? I don't know if I respond how it was at that time. Okay, thank you, sir. We still have me from Nigeria. How can we benefit? from a great village for Fountain University of Sokbo, Nigeria. Any contact msani at yahoo.co.uk and fc at fua type the email of Misani from Nigeria to so that Mr. Manuel Rokamora could uh, note the, the email. Yeah. Please, sir, for the question. I mean, regarding, regarding the model, it's not my model. <laughs> Let's say smart city, as I told you, I tried to do explain clearly from the beginning. Smart city, you have many models. And all can be valid. Depending on geolocation, you're talking about Nigeria. I have a couple of cases. Last week, I was in another speech with uh, some people from Nigerian project. So this is pretty much depend on the maturity level where you are, where you are planning to span. So the regenerative city is something that you need to think in the future, but you can apply depending on can be technology enabled that help to you this, or you can be the, the, the government can be the next. So all models can be can be valid. This is not one or the other. The, 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 the most important thing you need to think about how you want to do or how you space an interest in particular with Nigeria. Uh, so there is a very fast deployment, very fast growing. So we need to do many massive infrastructure. Uh, and that needs to be considered when you are trying to do the planning, urbanization. So repeat, this model is done by, it's not only by me, this is companies who are forward like the US Studio Urbine, like Small Net Zero, like uh, Studio Pomeroy, like a big, like, so based on that, this has been this evolution. Which one did you choose? All are valid depending on the level of maturity or the elements. For example, if you are a city more consolidated, you are a growing city like expanding very fast. You, this, is, this is depending. Mobility as a service, mobility companies to try to be clean. In my presentation, I shared it with the people. My email is, I will be more, more than happy to share any information you need. Or need. Thank you, sir. And then we have the last question from online participants. Slum areas in urban cities, especially for developing city and countries, such as Indonesia. Please, sir. Slum areas. Uh, I don't know if I cut correctly the questions. Um, I mean, what, what, what you need, this is the part where you need to. You need to consider how are you growing in a more holistic way. I, mean, I say for me, if Indonesia's particular case, you have the sample of the new capital, you need to move Jakarta outside from problems of floating traffic and other things. So, uh, so you must consider some elements. So uh, that means how is, for example, electricity, urbanization, 
Uh, how are they planning to do these areas? You don't have, for example, in any of the island grid at all, or off-grid and bad grid. I remember doing some assessment my time ago in Telco part of the Indosat or Stellnet. Or, uh, so it's, it's exciting. So these areas are pretty much similar, and you need to connect this thing to have more. I mean, it's not a magic, a magic thing to do this thing. You need a holistic approach and how you are planning to this whatever you do in the supply chain of the elements they are added to your system you need to assume this the esg that uh, not add more uh, emission or more or more uh, how to say more the uh, more friendly uh, city friendly or centric friendly to the people that's uh, i'm not sure if i uh, I, I respond you well the, the question. Otherwise, please send me an email with the start of the question I will be the, the city where you are talking about because maybe that did some assessment and some, some details. I can give you more personalized okay, details. Thank you so much, okay. Mr. Contamora. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we still have several minutes for this session. So we, we would like to open the opportunity for on site participants that if may. Uh, the participants on site would like to convey the questions to Mr. Okamura. Okay, seems that's all for the question answer session. Thank you so much, Mr. Manuel Okamura. Let's let us give warm and biggest appreciation for Mr. Manuel Okamura. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, and uh, thank you for the invitation. Thank you, all sir. the best. Thank you, sir. Bye -bye. Good afternoon from Indonesia. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen. Let's carry on to our next session, which is online documentation. For online participants, we can request for you to open your camera. In the next two minutes, we are going to take the documentation for online participants. We remind again for online participants, we can request for you to open your camera since in a moment, we're going to screenshot and capture for the online participants. Okay, on my count, one, two, and three. Please hold for a moment since there are some slides that need to be captured. Okay, first slide then. Second slide then. Third and fourth slide. Fifth slide. Six out of eight. Seven out of eight. Okay, now our last screenshot. Ladies and gentlemen, for the online participants especially, we would like for you to fill the form that our committee have dropped in the chat box of the Zoom meetings. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the final part of our event, 
We hope all discussions we had today will guide us in innovating solutions for smart cities challenges ahead. We can remind that we still have programs until 22nd of December, which we will start again our materials and our programs tomorrow at 10 a.m. on-site and online. For on-site event is going to be held at Auditorium Iptex East Center campus of Bandung Institute of Technology and online still in the same link of the Zoom meetings. For on-site participants, you could still have your coffee break and enjoy our cuisine at the backside of this auditorium after this event. On behalf of the committee, thank you for your great enthusiasm and participation. Lastly, good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you on the next program. Recording stopped. Yes.